Life on the Oregon Trail wasn't easy, but you knew things were looking up when you saw Independence Rock. So why was this landmark so beloved by the settlers? The Oregon Trail is a historical route that marks the United States' westward expansion. Today, you can still see and travel along most of the paths the settlers used to reach the western reaches of North America. Hey! Ah! One of the landmarks along the Oregon Trail is Wyoming's Independence Rock. The rock is considered the halfway point for many travelers. Given its name by fur trappers who camped below it on July 4, 1830, Independence Rock covers about 27 acres of ground. It is 1,900 feet long, 700 feet wide, and 136 feet high. All around it, you can see the carved names of the people who undertook the long and dangerous journey to the western coast of the United States. So many people felt such relief at the sight of the rock looming in the distance that they decided to make their mark on it. Made of granite, Independence Rock spreads across the Sweetwater Valley. It was once part of the granite range that rose in central Wyoming some 50 million years ago until the wind eroded and rounded it out over the ages. A great number of indigenous tribes visited the rock and left their carvings before the settlers ever caught wind of it. Many of these earlier inscriptions have since faded. The oldest remaining carving is from 1824, but even this has begun to smooth out. Independence Rock held a great deal of meaning to settlers. Not only was it the halfway point on their journey, but if they reached it by July 4th, many knew that they would make their destination before the weather turned too cold. It was essentially a way of telling whether the travelers were on schedule. April or May were the best months to start the journey through the Oregon Trail because there would be plenty of fresh spring grass for the livestock they depended on for the journey. A spring start also meant that they could beat the harsh winter to their destinations, though there were plenty of thunderstorms to contend with. Once they made it to Independence Rock, many travelers would partake in July 4th celebrations. One settler, Martha Hecox, wrote that while they didn't have fireworks on hand, they sang patriotic songs and enjoyed a picnic lunch at the Rock. From Independence Rock, the pioneers continued west over the Rocky Mountains to Fort Hull, a trading post in Utah, then onward over Oregon's Blue Mountains. This made for difficult terrain, but it marked the final mountain range the weary travelers would need to traverse on their journey. They then followed the Columbia River to known settlements in Oregon or continued south to California. It's estimated that almost half a million people passed by Independence Rock over the course of about 30 years during the heyday of Western expansion. Of these, thousands carved their name or a message onto the rock, giving the site the nickname of the Register of the Desert. Some painted their inscriptions using axle grease or paint, but the years have erased most of these. Eventually, the establishment of westbound railways eliminated the need to trek through the Oregon Trail, essentially ending the use of Independence Rock as a route marker. In 1961, the rock was designated a National Historic Landmark, and a footpath now surrounds it. Several exhibits tell the story of the trails and the people that undertook the dangerous journey west. You can even see visible ruts on the ground that were made as the wagons passed through, as well as the many inscriptions the settlers left behind. Visitors can also hike up Independence Rock, though the Park Service asks people to avoid stepping on the oldest inscriptions since these are already fading. And since it's located in a state-run rest stop, people can picnic in the area too. While cars are far faster than covered wagons, and most people who stop there are tourists, it's nice to know that Independence Rock is still providing relief to travelers to this day.